The Panama Canal is one of the two most important man-made waterways in the world. U ships use it as a shortcut to travel from Atlantic Ocean to Pacific Ocean and back. Giant ships have to pay more than half a million dollars as toll every time they use the canal. Despite this, tens of thousands of ships cross the Panama Canal every year, which brings the daily average traffic to around 40 ships. Given that there are many other alternative routes, why do many ships still prefer this very expensive path? In this video, we will not only answer this question, but we'll also explore the engineering marvel that the Panama Canal is. Over 80% of the cargo transport around the globe happens via sea. This is simply because sea freight is most cost efficient. Though air freight ensures speedy delivery, it is also extremely costly. When it comes to cost and speed, road and rail shipping lies somewhere between these two. But sea freight is always preferred when bulk goods need to be transported over long distances in large scale. Given that the global economy is hugely dependent on cargo shipping, it is safe to say that sea freight is essential to world trade. Oil, electronics and most other products that we cannot live without reach us via water. Only the shortest route can ensure that the goods reach the market on time and at lowest cost. This is what makes us shortcuts such as Panama Canal extremely important. It is the shortest route to cross into the Pacific Ocean from the Atlantic Ocean and vice versa. Before this, ships had no other way than to transfer the lengthy way around the South Americas to do so. For example, transporting goods from Europe to west coast of America required the ships to travel thousands of extra kilometers to reach their destination. Though there were several proposals to build a shortcut connecting the two oceans, it was French diplomat Ferdinand de Lesseps who took the initiative. He had just successfully constructed the Suez Canal and envisioned a similar sea level canal can be built in Panama. This required cutting through the mountains that were covered in dense forests and was by no means an easy feat. As the project reached nowhere, even after 14 years of struggle, it was abandoned. Over 21,000 workers were killed in the diseases and landslides by then. During this period, the USA had started cementing their status as a growing economic power in the world. They realized that by streamlining sea transport between their east and west coasts, they can catalyze their growth. Realizing its huge potential, the USA decided to take over the Panama Canal project that the French had given up on. However, America wanted this strategic route to remain under control. So, they staged a military intervention and held Panama to break away from Colombia and become an independent nation. America resumed the canal construction in 1904 and soon realized that it would be impossible to construct a sea level waterway in Panama. Instead, they came up with a very clever design to build a dam across a river flowing nearby and raise the water level to create an artificial lake. This water body was 25 meters above the sea level and hence integrate locks were created to raise the ships from the sea level to this height. A ship that enters from Atlantic Ocean to the canals enters the artificial lake via three lock chambers, travel through the lake and this is then descended to sea level via two other lock chambers. But this also means that the sizes of the ships too had to be limited to fit the dimensions of the lock chambers. The lock chambers in Panama Canal are 320 meter long, 33.5 meter wide and 12 meter deep. Only those ships that fit within these measurements can pass through the canal. These measurements are called Panamax and the ships that are meant to pass through the canal are constructed keeping this in mind. For instance, all American warships have to mandatorily stick to the Panamax measurements even today. It is only their huge aircraft and helicopter carriers that are exempt from this restriction. The Panama Canal is 82 kilometers long, 
and it takes less than 10 hours for the ships to cross it if not through the canal the ships would on average take at least extra 15 days this would mean huge cost for the shipping company when you take into account the fuel cost and charter fee for the ship which also includes the wages for the crew what the panama canal exacts as toll is only a fraction of this cost this is precisely why most shipping companies prefer this route besides cargo ships cruise ships and war ships also use the canal for passage the toll is computed based on parameters such as the type and the dimensions of the vessel and how much it weighs for instance a panamax container ship can carry as many as 5000 containers and at the rate of 90 dollars per container total toll is over 450k dollars a cruise ship will be charged on the basis of the number of travelers on the board given that the standard rate is 150 dollars per person a cruise ship carrying 4500 people will have to pay close to 675k dollars in toll only container ships with capacity up to 5000 containers can cross the old panamax locks of the canal with the aim of further reducing the freight costs bigger ships were built so panama responded by building bigger lock chambers these new panamax locks can hold ships with capacity up to 14000 containers however even larger ships and tankers are built today it is impossible even for new panamax to contain these super ships and tankers such carriers have no option than to look for alternatives for example a ship that leaves china to new york does not necessarily have to go via panama canal it can pass across the suez canal though it means traveling a slightly longer distance another alternative would be travel via sea to the west coast of usa and then rely on rail or road transport of move goods to the eastern coast even panama has constructed harbors roads and pipelines on either side of the canal with the same objective shipping companies estimate the cheapest route among these before choosing their preferred sea route other companies are also planning for the waterways that can compete with the panama canal nicaragua has one such plan a chinese company had even expressed interest to finance this project unfortunately the company declared bankruptcy and the project is temporarily suspended another parallel route is through the arctic however it is currently impossible to steer ships through this area due to the vast expanse of ice melting ice in arctic thanks to the global warming may soon change this as a result two new shipping routes are expected along the canadian and russian coasts in the coming decades apart from the challenge of competing waterways panama faces a multitude of other challenges too the most important being water scarcity water from the artificial reservoir is necessary for the canal to operate every time the lock is used thousands of liters of water flow into the sea and thus lost hence panama imposes many restrictions particularly during water scarce summers it is common for them to cap the maximum weight of ships that pass the canal the role that panama canal plays in the global economy is undisputed over 5% of the total cargo transport passes through the canal over 12% of the gdp of the small country of panama can be attributed to the canal itself unless the challenges that it faces today are addressed the canal itself might be rendered irrelevant in the future irrespective of what the canal's future is one thing is certain panama canal is truly an engineering marvel and will remain so for centuries to come